Yes. You're here to judge the uh, Fiddler of Dooney competition. Tell us about the Fiddler of Dooney competition. Well, I think it's been going on since around the 60s, mid-60s. And uh, uh, there was a, a poem that W.B. Yeats wrote about the contest or about the music and around Sligo and stuff. And uh, I had the pleasure of uh, playing some music for the kids in school with Junior Davy today. And they actually sang the poem to me. And uh, I was uh, impressed with how well the, the little school kids knew it. You know, so it's... Uh, just from W.B. Yeats writing about the whole story of the fiddle music and people loving the music and dancing to it. I'd say that's about the spirit of it. Sure. Uh, and Tony, you're a, a fiddle player yourself and uh, Sligo is no stranger to fiddle music, but you're of Italian descent. Tell me, uh, how is it you got involved in Irish music? Well, my mother's half Irish, uh, Dempsey, Patricia Dempsey. So I'm like a quarter Irish, three quarters Italian. But I really stumbled into it by chance. I came from kind of like a garage band rock and roll background as a kid. Picked up the fiddle my last year in high school and then uh, started with like American fiddle music, bluegrass, Appalachian. And later on, about a couple of years after that, started playing Irish music from meeting a lot of the fiddle players around New York. And particularly that came over and followed the style that came from Sligo. And why Sligo style in particular? Mostly because the uh, players like Michael Coleman, James Morrison, Patty and Martin Wynn, Lato Byrne, they came over and, well, particularly Coleman and Morrison and and they made recordings back in the 20s through the 40s. And when those recordings went around the world of Irish music, I mean, they were really influential to all styles of Irish music. And New York got put on the map as the home of kind of Sligo fiddle playing. And so, so the, guys, then, the guys I learned from, like Andy McGann, Patty Reynolds, and Martin Wynn, Vincent Harrison, Johnny Vesey, they all learned from those masters that came over to New York in the early 1900s and made those recordings. They all love Coleman and his music and Morrison. So that's a real New York style, you know, after so, left Ireland. Tony, it's all come full circle then, because you've been invited by the organizers of Sligo Live to come and judge this fantastic uh, Fiddler of Dooney competition. So you're hoping you won't be staying too long in the pub tonight? You're hoping you won't be staying too long in the pub tonight? No, I'm up early for the, for the judging at 11 o'clock, so. But I'm from New York, so I think I can handle it. You can handle late nights. <laughs> Tony, you're going to play a piece from your, uh, your CD, the Sligo Indian, I believe. Yeah, but... Sorry, what was that? You're going to play a piece from oh, your yeah, the, CD? The, the title track, uh, I'm going to try. Uh, the Sligo Indians, it was a story about me and my friend Caesar Pacifici playing in the back pub of Ted McGowan's and Gertrude. And uh, a fella came in there, and, and uh, he was working for PJ Hernan at the time. And he heard me and my friend playing music and ran back to PJ's house and said, PJ, you got to come to the pub. He said, there's two Indians playing Irish music in the back of the pub. So I thought that was kind of a funny story and named the tune I written later a jig. Uh, I named it the Sligo Indians. And then the Smithsonian Institute liked the story and the tune and made it the title track of my CD that came out on Folkways. Lovely. We're looking forward to hearing it. So make yourself, make yourself comfortable. Okay. Can I sit down? Yeah, yeah. So, Tony DeMarco on his uh, track on Sligo Indian.